just add your rock colors to the brush and, and pull that straight down. That is the greenest looking rock color. There it is, I found it. <laughs> it was hiding. Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful painting with a lot of large mountains, some evergreen trees, and a nice little, maybe a pond or a lake or something in the foreground. Should be fun if you're looking forward to seeing this and you'd like to see more. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now we're going to start with a nice soft turquoise sky. We'll, we'll build our colors out from this. It won't all be this color. There it is right there. Nice. Just put a little bit of clear gel and white. Honestly, it came down too far, so I'm going to be wiping a lot of that off kind of forgot what I was doing. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, I'll paint the sky and then realized, well, there's about one inch of sky. So, you know, that's okay. What are you gonna do? <laughs> there, just paint the rest in. See how I'm getting more and more to the blue side as I work away, especially over there. Honestly, I should, I should throw a little red into this mix. Now, what that'll do is it will start to just, oh, there it is, turn it more of a stormy, oh, yeah, just like that. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Oh, this is a, a good start. Now I'm going to drop in some clouds. Just using the filbert brush, scrubbing in very soft, soft clouds today. Nothing too crazy. I'm going to do my best not to go down into my mountain because that's just extra paint I'm going to have to wipe off later. We can't let it stay. There's just no way that's going to work out. When you're mountain painting, it's important to keep those mountains pretty clean because you know, there's a lot of layering required to paint a pretty mountain. They don't just happen in one or two brush strokes. And so in order to do that, you've got to control the paint on the canvas. And there's your free tip for today. <laughs> yes, right over here. Leave that little gap, I like that. And then bring in another one. A little bit of shadow cloud right there. And then I'm just noticing it's more like shadowy over here. So I'll do that just like this. Kind of already built that shadow in, which is nice. And maybe grab a little black. Check this out. Grab a little black, a little blue. Oh, the palette's already a mess. <laughs> I don't know. Make kind of a gray. And I think would be really cool right here. Kind of, whoa, that didn't work out. <laughs> Ever have it when, when stuff didn't work out? It happens every once in a while, doesn't it? There. Just lighten that spot. Just trying to add some subtleties, some, some different notes of color in there. If possible. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. See the difference? Hopefully. Hopefully it's noticeable and I'm not just the only one standing up here looking at it. Now I'm painting in some of these mountains. I went ahead and sketched it in. I'm using a quarter inch brush. Not because I want it to take five hours, but because I'm able to get these little bits of variation in there. You see that? I'm using this brush quickly, you know, not trying to drag this process out too much and obviously this is just not going to happen on the big one i'm thinking mostly on the small ones for this but at least and i did leave the clear gel in the sky and everything under at least this mountain i'll wipe it off that one probably but at least maybe just use the brush strokes and the paint that's already on the canvas to create the beginning stages of some some detail on these mountains there i'm going over my sketch now to almost basically just erase the top of it so that it, we've got some sharp areas and some soft areas. You want to do that. Pretty, pretty straightforward there. Good. Now you don't want it to be completely blurry, so maybe we'll, we'll bring that edge right back out, just right there. See that? That's how you can work those layers through. Okay, that's probably enough. We'll use a, a filbert brush or something to scrub in the rest of that. But let me just show you real quick. I've got my roll of shop towels. You will definitely want to have these. And we're just going to wipe off as best we can without ruining the top of the mountain. Wipe all that off. See that? <laughs> that would have ended up in our mountain lightening it and also thinning it down. I'd much rather just scrub onto the dry canvas, which we have now. <laughs> there we go. All right, so pretty much just grab a whole bunch of random colors and Let's paint this little shadow area in. We've got so many different things happening on top of this. You know, we've got highlights and trees and snow and all that good stuff. So just working on getting the first layer thrown in. I will also blend in some of these areas that I just couldn't get to with the small brush. But it has a little more texture that way. Maybe we'll have to do less work to those background mountains because of it. We'll see. <laughs> there.
Now I just finished sketching quite a little bit of this down here. It's a slightly more complicated mountain scene than normal, and I think it's useful to, to do that sketching. So there you go. Now that that's over with, we'll get our, our uh, shadow snow painted in. And the shadow snow is, is a good place to start. Sometimes it's hard to look up here at the mountain and say, oh, you know, where do we start? Start with your shadow snow. If you don't know where to, sh to start, I can't speak. <laughs> uh, anyway, the reason is it kind of helps to sculpt that mountain and you can kind of see what you're working with after the shadow snow is in. There. If you have any trouble making this stick or if for some reason you feel like, you know, it's going to be out of control in the next step, go ahead and stop and wipe the canvas. You won't really take too much of this off and it will help you quite a bit. Mm. And you can use the brush up. Ooh, where did that green come from? I have all, all sorts of things going on here today. There. That looks good. Might help you to have the brush upside down, I think is what I was going to say. But that is not bad. We'll just keep playing around with this. There's not a ton of this snow, but there is some. Just enough to give it that feeling. It's a little cold up here by the mountain. Mostly in the shadows, of course. Maybe add a little more blue to those shadows there. That's pretty. Now I'm changing gears just a little bit. I'm going to get some of this done faster. This is kind of my center of interest and then some of these rocks in here. But these trees are more of just filler kind of background material. So I'm going to just get them in more quickly. Save time for the things that matter. And that's something, you know, you think, so here's my paint. <laughs> you think, oh, I don't want to rush this, you know. Well, certain things are good to rush because they don't, they just don't need to be drawn out. There's no point to doing that and you're wasting your time. You don't have unlimited time to do these. It's just, you don't. I mean, everybody's kind of busy, right? So this will at least let you, you know, put your precious painting time into doing something that actually matters. So just a thought for you, you know, the stuff that doesn't matter as much, get it done quick. Put extra time in the details where it counts. That being said, just trying to slap these little trees in. And then what I'll actually do is probably transition down here, slap some of that in. I got a little meadow and it's all kind of the same thing with just slightly different colors. And that's about the only difference to it. <laughs> yes. That's, that's honestly just about all you need right there. And we'll detail those out, make them look very pretty in a little while. And now I'm just gonna use the Filbert brush in a nice light color, I don't know, just a yellow yellow color and I don't know we're gonna make our little meadow back here very quickly I'm not gonna go crazy and look I'm able to use the surrounding paint to make my shadows oh that's easy that just is a, is a nice shortcut isn't it and that's pretty much all you need look that highlight shadow all in one little go maybe wipe out that brush reload just a little more maybe get a little highlight not much but it's just well yeah maybe I don't know Trying, having second thoughts here. There, a little darker under the lights coming across like this, or, or through the, I don't know, we'll figure the light out. Doesn't really matter yet. But we'll figure it out before we get too much further. Oh, that's nice. See how we can kind of enhance that color as it comes down? Maybe raise a little, a little land up in here. Yes, that's good. I like that. It's kind of creating a different lay of the land there. Anyway, we'll just play around with this. But it's a quick and easy way to get a meadow in back there, isn't it? Now we're going to change gears again. <laughs> Jump back up to some detail work here on the mountain. This is nice. It's been a little while since we've uh, done anything up here. It's good to get a little more, a little more detail. I'm just kind of placing these highlights around my blue areas. Trying not to hit the blue because I do have yellow ochre in there and that would turn turn a little bit green. It wouldn't, wouldn't really matter, but you know. There, there's very, 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 very <laughs> little paint up here. It's just, it's just not much. You don't need much. If you put too much paint on the canvas, and I'm talking about on the canvas, not on the brush. If you put too much paint on the canvas, it just becomes a muddy mess. So I try to keep it as little as possible, and that's why this comes off so nice. You can take a take a paper towel and just lay it up there, then walk away for 10 minutes and come back, and and you'll actually absorb a lot of that oil. You just peel it right off. Have we done that before recently? I don't know if we have or not. I feel like I showed that recently. I was doing something. I don't know. You guys remember? I don't. <laughs> there. 
Maybe somebody in the comments can let me know. I'm almost sure I showed you that trick. If, if I didn't, I need to show you. I mean, I described it pretty well, but it's kind of fun to see it in action too. Oh boy. Now I'm also gonna, also gonna hit some, some more of a shadow. Oh, there we go. It's a little green. Uh, like I said, a little green's okay, but hit a little more shadow tone. Oh, there it is. Right up in here. But warm that mountain up just a little. Not, not so much that you lose that purple, but just a little. And that is really about all we need. A little brighter maybe, but that's the right idea. Now, isn't this normal? <laughs> I get a whole bunch of the painting done, and then I go paint something that's kind of in the middle that you have to work around stuff. I love doing stuff out of order. It makes me so happy. <laughs> there. Isn't that great? There is no medium down here. So the only paint you're going to encounter is what you hit around it on the land. And I'm good with that. This color is sort of similar to most of everything that we've got going up there. That's good. It doesn't really matter, does it? Nah, not really. Got some red in there, some blues, and and maybe some of these greens and stuff for reflections, but you'll see that I, I put some of that in the middle first, and it'd actually be a good idea to, to go ahead and get the rest of this in. Maybe a little darker over here. We've got more, see that? More reds, more blues. So let's get a little more blue over here. Not that it really makes a whole lot of difference. I've got just the startings of a little, of a little bit going on up there. Going right up to it, yes. Mm, that's pretty. So we'll just play around with this. And then when you kind of have a lot of the, the blue, ooh, come on now, a little more blue, a little more blue. <laughs> little blue, there, that looks good. When you got that all worked in, then you can come back and you can even add stuff to the brush. Just add your rock colors to the brush and, and pull that straight down. That is the greenest looking rock color. There it is, I found it. <laughs> it was hiding. Nice. Get yourself some really pretty reflections. Three quarter brush, one of my favorite for doing medium sized water areas. Gives you good control. It's a nice soft synthetic brush. If you don't have one, definitely go go check it out. You know, it's a lot of a lot of time that you invest in one of these paintings. I'd hate to see you, you know, struggle with your equipment. You might as well get that right. And then you can focus on the techniques. So now we're gonna do something again out of order. We're going to place in our larger trees. The reason I'm doing that before even highlighting, you know, the trees in the background or these rocks, because what if you wanted to, you know, put a tree where you had a lot of work? It would kind of be silly. It would be a lot of time that you would waste. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> Obviously, you're welcome to do that if you want to. All right. With all of that being said, let's figure out where we want these trees. Here's one right here. And I mean, yeah, we're probably going to have to go back here and try to sneak some highlight around. The I don't care. It doesn't matter. Plus it's easier to paint dark over dark and then put your light around it than it is to try to make dark over light and then try to highlight that, you know, big mess. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. All right, anyway, we'll just, uh, we'll use the sort of the simple version of getting these trees in. Just stick a little line in. If you haven't seen a lot of my trees, you just, one of my favorite ways, just plop some color down like this and make a big mess and sort of close your eyes and don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, so much of the time we get a better result if you just close your eyes and throw it in. All right, that is very decent. Wow, those rocks are super, super slippery. I should probably wipe those off, but that's all right. Okay, there's some color, and what we'll do is we'll come in with our detail brush and add some details. <laughs> Imagine that. This is where you create all those fine edges. I mean, don't go crazy, because you're gonna mess this tree up just a little. We'll have to put our fine edges right back over. So spend a few minutes, spend a little less time than you think you need to, so that, you know, you still got room to come back and, and, and play with them. That's my thought. I think it's gonna work out good, actually. It's gonna be just fine. All right, maybe just set that brush down and keep going. Where else should we do a tree? Or uh, maybe right here. Kind of do them wherever you want to. That's going to be a nice one, it's smaller. Glop some of that paint on. And honestly, you may need to come in here and wipe this with a paper towel. See how it's picking that paint up a little more than I wish it would? Probably come and wipe that off later and darken it. But I'll do that on my own because that's kind of redundant, isn't it? There. The slower you go, the better this looks. I hate to say it. There. All right. Maybe we want some trees over on the right side. You know, this little blank area. 
Maybe we want one that goes way up here. Oh yeah, that's a decent one right there. We won't have any trouble with the, the light colors trying to sneak in on this one. Nice. Look how far I come down to start my little branches. I leave all that top, that way I can grab that with a detail brush and put those small, small limbs at the top without the tree becoming <laughs> fat really quick. And you know what I'm talking about. Oh, does that ever happen? Our trees, they grow so fast. They'll be, they'll be an inch thick at the top and then you, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you guys are laughing at me right now because you know what I'm talking about. If you need any help, I've got several full-length lessons. You can either buy the DVD disc or, you know, the download on the website just about trees. If you haven't already checked that out, definitely go do that. It'll save you a ton of time and some paint. <laughs> there. Now I'm actually losing quite a few of my rocks, which is a little bit unfortunate. I should have done the grass a little earlier and painted the rocks around so I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have covered them up that way. Or wouldn't have painted them, rather wouldn't have had to cover them up. But I need the grass on top of here. This grass is important because it makes us feel more like a landscape that's connected. One of the hardest things to do in a painting, as you know, is connect the background with the foreground. And this is helping to do that. So I'm just coming in with a detail brush and just literally kind of stabbing on the side like that to get these little chunks of highlight. And the smoother the better here. You don't want too much roughness. So, maybe I'll even feather that out further. This helps though. See how that's starting to make this look more connected. You can get up here and you can smoosh on a little. It doesn't matter. Smoosh on a little more like that. Good. Good, good. So you just play around with this till you're happy with the value. And then you want to probably leave it alone so it doesn't get muddy. There. Mm, that's good. Light is coming. Probably just across like this. It's getting a nice little highlight. That looks really good. And you could honestly play with the details of this for, for quite a while. Bring some of these over some rocks that we'll put in. There. Yeah, that looks good. See, it's coming over the edge now. Really, actually, be smart to go, go ahead and just uh, darken that color and bring some of this grass down the other side as well. That will help fill in and also, also it'll help kind of create that balanced look to this side of the landscape. Maybe even grass growing all the way down into this little valley back here. That's more the effect we want. Oh, that's good. And that those rocks here stand out against that now. That's pretty. Now it's finally time to start working on some grass. Something other than, than the little details. Kind of nice to be getting in some big stuff now. There, this looks good. This painting is a little bit more time consuming than some because of the amount of mid-ground, a lot of mid-ground. And mid-ground is the slowest part to paint because it requires the most brush strokes generally. It's not always true, but most of the time it is. There, so now painting some beautiful foreground grass, just going right over my rocks, right over my, my just underpainting that was there. Trying to, trying to get a nice effect. Always, of course, changing my color. There's a lot of greens. We're, there are a few golds, but not a bunch of golds. So I'm not going to use, I'm not going to make it look like it's fall time necessarily. Oh yeah, that looks great. Maybe a little brighter. You can kind of, kind of manipulate the light to where it looks like it's flowing through. That's really what we're going for. A little more yellow. See, I can just work those colors in and around. They're very pretty. Wiped brush when it gets clogged. There, that's it. And then back here, maybe a little more green. Oh, maybe a little more green over here too. Okay, I'm gonna add some dark ones on top of that. And I've also got liner brush grass, so I don't, I'm not gonna go terribly crazy there. Oh, there's some bright white, I like that. Mm. Yeah, that's, oh, that's nice. Okay, don't overdo. <laughs> All right, now over here. We don't want these trees to be, this land's just a little further away. The perspective's a little funny here. Maybe cut these down, we'll put some rocks, I don't know. But right in here, right in here, we want some of these trees to be forward and some of them to be backward. And we'll get that by putting this grass in 
and then bringing some of these trees down over it. You'll see what I mean. But for now, just placing in this grass right over all this. This one here is definitely in front. So I'll just stop right there so I don't have to paint over it too much. Maybe a little, little section right there. That's it, that's the idea. And then continue that. Oh, this is gonna be nice right over here. Now we finally get to highlight our trees. And this is one of the last things I know we do need to do liner brush work. But I'm just, just got a little green, I'm kind of going along in the middle of the tree. This is more of a mid-tone than a highlight. I might put a little highlight. I kind of got one started there. Might just hit a little. I don't need a bunch. This mid-tone really fills in the tree nicely. It kind of makes it not flat. It makes it not look so dark, which is so important. That is so good right there. Okay, nice. The other thing you can do and probably should do is take a little blue. Just mix blue right into that color. And look, add a shadow, especially on these larger trees. That one, that one, maybe one in the middle here. You know, give yourself a little more color variation as well as some light and dark areas this way. See that? Oh, what a big difference. And honestly, you probably want to keep that on the right side. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get too crazy with it. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be getting your shop towel out and you'll be wiping this up. We don't want to do that. Not if we can help it at least. <laughs> oh boy, I probably shouldn't have said that. So now I'm gonna go and do it. But that looks pretty decent. Now I'm gonna add those final details. This is probably, really is probably gonna be the last thing we do. Just, just make these little foreground areas pop. I don't need a bunch of grass today. I've got a lot of grass already painted in with the fan brush. There. That looks pretty good. Just some of these dark ones right over that water. That's so, so nice. <laughs> oh, get to where I'm painting and not talking. That's okay. At least I think it's okay. Yeah, all right, and maybe over on this corner as well. See how I start with the dark ones today and maybe get into the lighter ones if we want them. Get these dark ones and see if we need them. But that really helps to kind of round out the painting, doesn't it? You don't want to skip out on the liner brush work. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, also this painting for sale. It'll be on the website. Thanks for watching.